everyone. Um, welcome to our talk on uh, biomedical visual language proce uh, processing. Um, my name is Stephanie Highland. I'm a senior researcher in the uh, Health Futures team at Microsoft Research. This is my colleague, Fernando. Hi, I'm Fernando Perez Garcia. I'm a senior research machine learning engineer at the uh, Biomedical Imaging Group, Microsoft Research Cambridge. Um, great, so uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Um, over the next 20 or so minutes, we're going to talk about um, our work in this space uh, and also show you some uh, demos of our technology. Great, let me get started. So as an outline, um, what we're going to talk about today is why do we care about vision language learning in the first place? Uh, we're focusing on a use case from radiology, which is the area that uh, we're, we're focusing on. Um, in particular, we're going to touch on what are the domain-specific challenges of vision language processing in the biomedical, specifically the radiology space. Um, and then we're also going to talk about how we address these challenges and how we're enabling um, further research through um, sharing code, sharing model weights, and other open source efforts, including uh, benchmark data set releases. So, let's start with our uh, radiology use case. Um, so, if you're not familiar with radiology, um, essentially the way it works is an image will be taken of you. So, let's say a chest X-ray, an MRI, a CT. Uh, this image will be interpreted by a, a specialist, a radiologist, who will then write a report summarizing what they've observed, their impression, um, and their findings. So one of the challenges in radiology is that there are significant backlogs um, due to essentially a, a lot of work that's, that's needed to be done, and also the highly specialized uh, expertise of radiologists, um, where there are essentially not enough radiologists to report on all of the images that are being taken. Um, and so this is, this is resulting in, of course, delays in people accessing care, but also an in incredible burden on the existing radiologists to do more work le in less time, which can result in safety, safety issues and worker burnout and yeah, various uh, terrible downstream consequences. Um, so, of course, we're machine learning researchers. We're interested in understanding how we can help with machine learning. But of course, uh, machine learning typically requires uh, a lot of labeled data. Uh, and in, especially in the medical domain, labeled data is quite scarce. So what we're proposing here is, of course, to do self-supervised learning by exploiting the fact that we have paired images and reports. But there are some challenges associated with this. So in the general domain, uh, there are perhaps access to more, let's say, foundation models, large models, pre-trained pre language models, which you could use, pre-trained image models, um, which you could use in a self-supervised pipeline. Um, we also have smaller data sets, so we don't have billions of examples. We have of the order, let's say, 200,000 image report pairs in the data set that we're working with. And we also have particular challenges associated with the text domain so radiology text is quite different to general domain text, which means that we can't simply transfer existing general domain vision language processing methods over to radiology or to biomedicine and expect them to work. So let me talk a little bit in more detail about this last point. So radiology has particular nuances. So as you can see, this is the, um, this is the image and this is an example report. Some of the challenges that we have are, it's very common in a radiology report for the absence of something to be described. If you think about a general domain image captioning data set, this is quite uncommon. You wouldn't write, there is no dog in this image. Whereas in radiology, it's very common to say, for example, there is no pneumothorax. We also have relatively long range dependencies in the language. So sentences could be quite long and they could refer even within the same report to different sections. We also have data in the text domain, which is unrelated to the image, let's say. So for example, they may say, I discuss these findings with a doctor, or potentially I recommend a follow-up scan. These things which may pertain to the image in some sense, but may not share semantic overlap, which is going to introduce noise during our self-supervised training pipeline. So these are some of the challenges associated with doing um, vision language processing in the radiology domain. So uh, to address some of these challenges, um, we have this recent work which was published uh, not at NERFS but at ECCV in 2022. Uh, so this is the work uh, with uh, many colleagues, um, some of whom are here in the audience um, and who would all be very happy to discuss this work with you if you have particular questions. Um, but I'm going to go through the high level approach what we did in this paper um, in the next couple of slides. So. Uh, what's key to the, um, to the idea here is about thinking about how can we better um, adapt our text models to the nuances of radiology text so that we can enable improved supervision during the vision language um, self-supervised training. 
So what we do here is we have a domain-specific pre-training phase for our text model. So in particular, what we do is we train, um, we train on um, radiology and clinical um, and biomedical information from PubMed, Mimic 3, and Mimic Chest X-Ray. Uh, we also develop a specific radiology vocabulary because uh, if you use a general, general domain tokenizer, you may actually break up important radiology terms. So we have a, a domain-specific uh, vocabulary. And then we do uh, pre-training on all of these uh, corpora. We then have a special phase of unimodal self-supervised learning for the text model in particular. So as part of this, we do both traditional mass language modeling, and we also have a radiology-specific self-supervised objective, which is specifically um, text uh, section matching for radiology reports. So radiology reports are broken into different sections. And what we do is we do matching between the finding section and the impression section. One of these is more like a summary of the other. But we know from radiology domain that these should have quite a lot of semantic overlap. So we're able to define a self-supervised objective of matching these two um, sections. So through this, we end up with a radiology-specific text model, which we call CXR BERT. If you're interested in using this model, it is available on Hugging Face, um, if you have any radiology needs. So then what we do is we use this text model during a joint multimodal training phase. So this, if you're familiar with models like CLIP, um, the basic idea would be I'm training my image, my image encoder and my text model jointly at the same time. Um, so what we have here in a little bit more detail is we have an image which goes through our image encoder. We get patch representations. We project them into a joint space, which will enable contrastive learning with the text embeddings. And then we use these uh, with, as I said, a contrastive loss. We do something similar on the text side. We use some radiology-specific text augmentations. In particular, we shuffle sentences, because we know that in radiology reports, although they can be quite long, uh, they're often invariant to sentence permutations because they're simply listing findings. So we use this as a radiology-specific text augmentation. We put these through our encoder, and then we can do a contrastive loss. We also use a mass language modeling loss on the text model specifically uh, to make sure it maintains its radiology-specific knowledge uh, during joint training. Uh, we call this uh, pipeline BioVille, in case you're interested. It is described in more detail in our ECCB paper. Um, I also want to mention that we do both global and contrastive uh, training, which is quite important for improving grounding, which I'll get to in a moment. And we, in this paper, we do evaluation both of the image model, the text model, and on the joint, uh, the joint latent space we learn, which I'll now talk about in a little bit more detail. So, evaluation of multimodal models is obviously an evolving field. Um, in prior work, um, a lot of papers have focused on purely unimodal evaluation. So you think about joint training as a way to learn a better text model or a better image model. But we're interested also in learning a good joint, uh, joint latent space. So we also want to evaluate that. So something that we propose in this paper and we release the corresponding data set is a radiology specific phrase grounding task, which is about localization of um, text fragments, let's say, or sentences with image uh, components. I'll talk about that in a moment. So this is the uh, benchmark data set that we released for phrase grounding. We call it MSCXR. Uh, this is available on PhysioNet if you're interested. Um, and Fernando will talk a little bit more about how, how we actually work with this data set uh, later. But basically, um, there's some examples here. Apologies to people standing here, I might be in the way. Um, but essentially what you can do is you can put an input query, like a sentence like cardiomegaly is noted. And you can use similarity between the text representation and image patches to identify what part of the image is most similar to that particular text query. And this enables us to do localization of findings on the image. So our data set consists of over a thousand um, image, image uh, text pairs with bounding boxes identifying where the pathology of interest is um, across a, a multitude of different findings. Um, and this was manually annotated and curated by uh, two radiologists. So uh, we hope you, uh, you make use of this data set and you benefit from it. So just as an example of um, how well these models are actually working, we're doing good for time, um, on this particular phrase grounding data set, um, what we're showing is we're reporting um, contrast to noise ratio and mean intersection over union. So these are classic metrics for how well you're localizing something within a box. So higher is better for both of these. So what we're able to compare is against um, baseline methods, which may be trained with 
uh, let's say, non-domain specific text models. We can see different text models here. Um, they may be clinical text models, but they're not radiology specific text models. We can see the impact of uh, training with our CX Arbor text model during joint training um, on both of our metrics. We further observe that um, using the local loss uh, is actually really important for this particular localization task. Um, I also want to stress that unimodal tasks uh, also benefit from our pre-training pipeline. So we're interested in the joint space, but we also can demonstrate that uh, both your text-specific and your image-specific um, tasks are improved. So for example, um, CX Arbert, the, mo the model we're releasing on Hugging Face, it shows a superior transfer performance on a challenging radiology-specific NLI dataset after joint training. So we see an improvement um, here. We also show that uh, you can do image-only um, pneumonia detection uh, both zero shot and few shot. In particular, the way zero shot works is you can generate a prompt that says there is pneumonia in the image or there is no pneumonia in the image. And because we have this joint latent space, we're able to identify which one of these prompts is more similar to the image, which then enables us to do zero shot, essentially open set pathology classification. So I've given you a very high level overview of some of this recent work from ECCD. Uh, please read the paper if you're interested. Just to give you a sense of some of the future work we're thinking about and the open questions. Of course, a lot of what we're doing here is about thinking carefully about how we can make the most out of the text data. So we're thinking about how we can make more out of other data sources. So in particular, um, we know that in radiology often there are multiple scans taken. Um, so the progress of the patient may be tracked throughout time. So we are also interested in knowing how perhaps using previous images or multiple images could further improve um, these models. We're also interested in learning from, let's say you had a small amount of segmentation data or labeled data, could you make use of that? So it doesn't have to be fully self-supervised. And we're also very interested in what, what can you do if you have a good synthetic data generator? So this could open up access to a lot more data, but of course now it's synthetic. So can we leverage such data sources? Um, and then of course, uh, I've spoken a lot about pre-training, but we always want to use these models for something. So we're interested in developing downstream use cases, for example, report generation or perhaps error detection. So uh, we are hiring interns for 2023. So if any of these things or anything else I've discussed is of interest to you, uh, please reach out to us after the talk or find any of our colleagues um, around at Neurips. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Fernando to talk about um, demos and open source. Thank you. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit the capabilities of our pre-trained models. So what we're going to do now, this is a tool that we can uh, use after the talk so you can play with it. We got, we're loading one of the, the cases in MSCXR, the data set that Stephanie mentioned. In this case, we can see that there's a clinical finding saying that there is cardiomegaly, meaning the heart is too large. So we're going to prompt a text model with a rephrasing of that. We're saying cardiac silhouette is enlarged. And what we expect is a strong response of the model around the heart. So the, we have here um, a heat map of the cosine similarities between the um, um, text query and the patch, uh, image patches in the in latent space. We, um, our data set covers a wide range of um, findings. So here we are loading a case with consolidations that look uh, brighter. Um, and then it also has um, pleural effusion. That means there is liquid in the lungs. And what we're doing here is we are passing a prompt that adds modifiers, saying that the, uh, the pathology here is bilateral and it's rather in the upper lungs. So we would expect uh, a response from the model around, um, around those areas. And that's what, that's what we're seeing here in, uh, in red. And um, what we're going to do next is show how the model is also sensitive to other um, modifiers, such as left and right. So we said it's bilateral. Uh, we're going to write. Uh, we're going to write here. We're going to pass the text query uh, left pleural effusion. So we should see a strong response on the right side of the image, which is the left lung, which is what we're seeing here. Um, and then we can do the same with the with the right side, um, where we we should expect uh, a response in the base of the of the right lung and in the uh, costophrenic angle, costophrenic angle, which is what we're seeing um, down here. Um, all our models are publicly available on Hugging Face. Everything is, uh, is uh, ready to build upon. Um, all our code is, uh, or the, uh, we have the code for inference is available on GitHub. And we also have a Jupyter Notebook demo hosted on Binder that we'll go through in a minute. 
Uh, so that can be run online without installing anything and we ha without downloading anything. Um, and we have also these resources where you can take a look at our paper and uh, data set on, on Fisionet. And um, the next is this uh, Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to show you how to, I think we need to start, how to, start, how to get to it. Uh, so you just need to search HTML Multimodal, which is the name of our PyPy package. Um, you'll reach the, uh, the package, you'll reach the documentation, and you'll find a link to the notebook, uh, which is hosted on, on, on Binder. Um, and this is so that you can get your hands on the actual models and take a look at the code and, uh, and run it yourself. Um, it should load, but it's not. No? Technical problems? It doesn't matter. The notebook is there. You've seen how to reach it. Um, and you can run it yourself. There you go. It's not, um, it's not playing. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's here. Thank you. Uh, so the, here's the notebook. Um, so we have an introduction to the paper. Um, and then um, this is uh, the commands that you, you just need to install the, uh, the PyPy package that we, that we saw before. And we load uh, Python um, library modules for text and for image and for joint, uh, joint inference, which uh, has hung again. But it does, I, I think uh, it's OK. It's all right. Basically, uh, this is the code that runs under the hood for the demo that we showed before, if you want to take a look. And uh, yeah, if we go, if we move forward, this is our team. So this is uh, this is work by not only engineers and researchers, uh, specialists in uh, specialized in uh, medical imaging um, and uh, machine learning. We have also collaborators from Microsoft Research Redmond that are experts in biomedical natural language processing. Um, but this is not only uh, work uh, by by uh, engineers and researchers. We have also specialists in. Uh, and UX in uh, user experience, and we have um, strong collaborations with clinicians working working with us to better understand the problems that we're trying to solve and to have a better clinical context. And I think that's all. So yeah, feel free to come to us uh, after the talk if you want to play with our demos and if, or if you want to discuss about our research or our intern internship uh, possibilities. Thank you. Thank you.